Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event today. My name is John Sheik, I'm the founder of Uni Taster Days, and it's my job to introduce the event and introduce our speaker. The speaker today is Dave Roberts, joining us from Commentary University. Dave is an associate professor and is going to provide a session looking at quantity surveying and commercial management. With these events, we like to cover why you might be interested in studying the course, what to expect on it, application tips and careers. But I'm conscious you've tuned in from here to hear from our speaker, not for myself. So with that, I'll pass things over to Dave Roberts, a associate professor at Coventry University, with a session looking at quantity surveying and commercial management. Over to you, Dave. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am David Roberts. I'm an associate professor for quantity surveying and commercial management at Coventry University. And I'm going to take you through some of the key aspects of being a quantity surveyor or a commercial manager uh, in the construction industry. OK, so the first thing that we need to know is what exactly is a quantity surveyor and a commercial manager? Um, first thing that I would want to say is the impact of the construction industry on uh, a country's economy. So as quantity surveyors, we have a, a particular interest in finances and uh, legal matters to do with the construction industry. And quite often when you mention the word construction or the word building to anybody outside of the sector, they immediately start thinking of bricklayers and carpenters and electricians, people who actually do the work. But there's so much more to the industry than just that. Um, and as you can see from what I've said there, 10% of the UK employment is wrapped up in aspects of the construction industry. So there's so much involved in the design uh, and the costing and the management and the way that the, the construction uh, works, particularly from a sustainability point of view, um, that needs to be taken into account when we're, we're looking at uh, the construction overall. 7% of the, the UK's wealth again comes from the construction sector uh, and that's a typical standard for the world as a whole so it's a really important sector but there's so much more to the industry than just um, the, the, the doing the work the actual building itself uh, i've listed out on the side uh, of the slide there some of the aspects of what a quantity surveyor does um, financial management looking after the finances from a client's perspective or from a contractor's perspective uh, we, we do lots of um, advice around finances, legal experts, we're classed as the legal experts within the industry and most of that is wrapped up in contracts and the way contracts work, which doesn't sound terribly exciting, but uh, it, it is when you start doing it. Um, part of what we have to do is measuring efficiencies and coming up with better ways and cheaper ways of doing things, uh, not always cheaper, but, but um, measuring the efficiency involved in that. Uh, sustainability management, one of the big aspects of what we do in the industry is making sure that whatever is produced is not harming the environment or society while maintaining an, an economic interest. So uh, a lot of the advice that comes from the quantity sphere has to take all of those aspects into account. Uh, and we're one of the professions that need to know pretty much everything about the industry. We, we have a look at the industry from its early uh, inception right the way through until it's been completed and even beyond that we, we still get involved in in aspects of uh, managing the build when it, the building is being used later on as well uh, we will look at things like risk management and assessing risk as uh, as a project uh, basis not not necessarily health and safety risk although that's a part of it it's mainly as a project uh, basis and we, we, we manage the, the risk um, process there and we also get involved in process management so looking at the way things are done in the industry um, and because of that we have to be very innovative uh, so we're looking at sustainable innovative practices new ways of doing things uh, to enhance everything uh, within the, the sector as a whole. OK, so that was a little bit about the quantity survey and what the term quantity surveyor means. Now, there are two sides to a quantity surveying uh, role. We, we class them as quantity surveyors and now uh, more recently commercial managers. So the quantity surveyor, what is often termed in the industry as a PQS, is somebody that works for the client and advises the client on certain aspects of the, the process uh, in getting their project. 
and then there is uh, either a commercial manager or a CQS that represents the um, the contractor side and advises the contractor uh, and works with the contractor to ensure that the various aspects of their role get completed uh, effectively. So I've listed on the screens, you can see that I've listed out both sides. Um, if we looked at the PQS first, which is the one that's on the left, um, client advisor, we advise the clients and the design team through the early parts of the, the process. So whenever you want a project building, you have to start with the design and, and getting the the uh, image and the specification of the final project onto I was going to say paper but onto some sort of digital electronic format as it is nowadays um, and that process needs to be uh, controlled uh, all the way through the design process it needs to be controlled from a financial point of view and a risk point of view and that's where the quantity surveyor gets involved so we will advise the client on any changes they want to make to the design. We will advise the designers on any um, changes that they want to make to the designs to what that cost implication is going to be and, and managing it within the budget. The PQS will follow the project all the way through, even once it started to be built, and, and they will get involved in advising the client on cash flow, uh, cash flow forecasting, how the money is being spent, uh, potentially money as it's coming in, and um dealing with all of the payments that need to be made to the contractor and, and uh, involving those and checking those payments are correct and and fair um any variations that happen during the design process or during the build process that variations is a change so if the uh, the designer has built it in one in a certain way and then as the building is being built either the client changes their mind or something forces a change then there is a variation to that contract and the um, the quantity survey will manage that process of making sure that that is done correctly. Uh, on the contractor side, again, we're advising, and quite often nowadays the contractor gets involved in the design process. So again, the quantity survey will be there to design, uh, to sorry, to manage the design process from a financial point of view, and, and suggest better ways of doing things, more efficient ways of doing things. Uh, we get quite heavily involved in something called value engineering, which is um, managing the, the the process to try and make everything a little bit more efficient. Uh, we would get involved in managing the supply chain, so any uh, subcontractors or suppliers that are providing services to the main contractor, uh, we would manage that process and make sure that it is done in the right way. We would produce valuations, so whereas the PQS is involved in sorting out the payments, the CQS uh, or the commercial manager is involved in trying to claim those payments from the other side. Uh, and then there's also contract management, so any issues that uh, arise from uh, within the contract itself and the legal document, then the quantity surveyor would be involved in managing that whole process. OK, so that's uh, a little bit about the role uh, as, as a whole and how it all works within the construction sector and the, and the industry. Um, you might be asking yourself, why would you choose to do this uh, to do this job? And it, it is something that isn't often understood by people from outside of the industry. So I'll give you a little bit of, um, of background about what might feed you down this way. Now, quite often um, we're classed as dealing with accounts and accounting and finance and, and people who have got that uh, that way about them of uh, wanting to do some, some, some something relating to finance um, might find that this is a, a useful alternative because it, it is linked to a very uh, prominent industry within the sector without just doing finance. So it gives you that, that varied role. Uh, but some of the, the aspects that we, you will see uh, within the role is there's a a good aspect of problem solving. I said before, we have to come up with efficiencies and new ways of doing things and problem solving is usually involved in that task. So if you're um, the sort of person that likes looking at problems and solving problems and coming out with new ways of doing things and being innovative, then that would suit this. Uh, the industry as a whole, but also the quantity surveying and the commercial management role is, uh, is quite digitized nowadays. So anybody who's got an interest in computing or gaming or uh, working in that digital environment, again, this would be something to consider because it's a, quite an important aspect of what we do. 
uh, half of our time is spent working with computers. The other half of the time is spent talking and communicating and dealing with issues and, and um, things that are going on with live projects. Uh, I've mentioned the finances. Uh, another important thing of what we do, as I said before, is communicating and talking and collaborating. So this team working process um, is really important to us. The, the ability to work as part of a team and help and support uh, a team is something that, that is uh, a, a big part of, uh, of what we do. Um, and when you're looking for universities and ways of uh, developing yourself to move forward, uh, keep an eye out for something along those lines. Look for interdisciplinary projects or group working or something along those lines to make sure that it is enhancing the right skills uh, for you. Uh, it is a varied role. You can, particularly when working as a PQS, you can be working on all sorts of different projects. Um, I've worked on I don't know, multi-storey buildings, I've worked on big factory estates, I've worked on housing, I've worked in um, churches, uh, all sorts of uh, various things, some historic buildings. I've, I've had quite a varied uh, career before coming into education. And so that is something that, that can often appeal to people, that you, you work on, on a variety of projects. Uh, even when you work as a contractor's QS or as a, a commercial manager, you might be on a project for a longer period of time than you would as a PQS, but you, you you do try different types of work, lots of varied aspects of work and the um, things that you need to know and the bits that you need to get involved with is is varied as well. It, uh, it moves around quite a lot and that leads into the next point there, which is knowledge of, of different aspects. You need to understand design, you need to understand costing, you need to understand the way things are built you need to keep on top of all of the innovative practices that are going on within the sector, the use of drones and the use of virtual reality and augmented reality and all of those different things. As QSs, we need to know about those because we're going to be advising on whether they should be used or not. Um, moving on to the right hand side of the page, I'm guessing most of your eyes were drawn to that uh, first anyway, because the wages are pretty good. Uh, starting salary for graduates is somewhere between 27 and 30,000 typically. Obviously, you can you can go down from there and sometimes you can go up from there as well, depending on, on the sector you move into. But it, it's a pretty good salary. I think at the moment they are saying 27 or 27 and a half thousand is the average. Um, it's a global industry. So the RICS, which is our uh, professional body that looks after what we do as a profession, they've got offices. Uh, around the world and what we do is needed around the world because we control the finances and so uh, you could find yourself working into some some weird and wonderful places uh, globally. Uh, we are in demand. Uh, you'll see that courses have sub subscribed quite heavily but also most universities have got a very good track record of getting people into employment and that's because the role is in demand and it's been in demand for a number of years. We have got to change. We've got to uh, flex and, and move with what happens uh, coming coming up in the industry, which is why I've said that it's very fast paced. Our changes, our innovation is is um, it does move along very quickly, and it's important for us to keep on top of that. Um, but even so, as long as you keep moving and keep developing and keep looking at the the new innovations, then you will be um, be very much in demand for uh, for the rest of your working life uh, if you enjoy the process. OK, so um, very briefly or more briefly than the slides I've given to date anyway, uh, I'll give you some indication about what to expect when, first of all, you go to university and then secondly, when you end up in, in work. So at university, you'll have the option of doing either a full time degree or a sandwich degree. Uh, make sure that any university you apply to has got uh, RICS accreditation. So the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors is our professional body and having that accreditation is, is going to make your transition into work much smoother. Uh, you'll have a variety of modules. Uh, usually the first year modules will give you an introduction into the industry and give you a, a broad understanding of how the industry works because we're trying to make sure that any A-level students entering and any BTEC students that are entering to the, the course plus from any other area, that, that at the end of the first year, you're on a, an even playing field. Uh, and then in the second year, you'll start to focus more heavily on things like cost, 
cost management and law. And then in the third year, you'll usually go into the more complex subjects such as contract management uh, and finance and valuation management, uh, as well as probably doing a dissertation. So that's the, the structure of how you would expect life in university to be. When you get into industry, I've listed out some of the things that you will do there. Uh, negotiations, communications, problem solving, being able to look at the bigger picture. There's lots of meetings, lots of computer work, lots of talking. And I have finished it off by saying lots of fun. Um, I have yet to meet a quantity surveyor in industry who has said that they've regretted the uh, stepping into industry. Despite the fact that it is hard work, the, the industry, the process of being a quantity surveyor is something that is usually enjoyed by the people who end up doing that role. OK, so I'm going to finish off with some application tips. If you want to make this um, progress into the quantity surveying world, then these are some of the things that you might want to consider. First of all, when you're doing a personal statement, make sure your personal statement has got uh, a reason as to why you want to do quantity surveying or quantity surveying and commercial management. Don't just leave it at the reason you want to do something professional within the construction sector. Uh, take that extra step and discuss quantity surveying um, or quantity surveying and commercial management. Provide some evidence that you've done some research into the subject. Talk about the subject as a, as a whole within your personal statement. That will help you as well. Again, I've mentioned before, RICS accredited. It's important that you have that. Um, as well, when you are provided with an offer, consider those offers and accept the offers early. Don't sit and wait because um, it, it doesn't help with the system and the process that you're going through. So if you know what it is you want to do, then accept the offers um, early. Uh, if you are unsure what it is you want to do, then take up any opportunity you can to do some work experience. If you can't do work experience, then try and do some shadowing. You won't necessarily get paid for it, but if you're having um, summer holidays, uh, half terms, not so much the Christmas holidays, but Easter holidays, if you can contact some of the organisations within the sector to say, can I come and shadow you and see what it is you do for a week, most people in the industry would would snatch your hand off for for doing that. They they really uh, enjoy showing what what they are all about, and it will give you a good insight into what the industry is as well. Uh, some other things: attend open days, start attending open days as soon as you start thinking about what career you want to do. So um, even even at the last year of your GCSEs, it's not a bad thing to start going to open days to to get around as many universities as you can. Uh, look at league tables, although they are ones that, that you should sort of take a pinch of salt with because the two different, two main league tables that we look at, um, they don't always uh, talk about the same type of attributes that you would get from a course. Some are very research based, some are very student uh, engagement focused. So think about what you want to know, and what you want to get out of your course and then look at that league table and follow that league table. Uh, consider the city, consider the town, consider the surrounding area for where you're going to go, because for most of the time that you're not in lectures, you're going to be taking part in that uh, surrounding area, uh, as well as going to the library, of course, which is uh, extremely important. Um, but, but take into account the place you're going to live and, and how that's going to impact on you. Uh, think about the employability support, because uh, not everybody does the employability aspect the getting you into work when you finish your degree uh, as well as, as some of the others so that's an important thing to look at if you get the opportunity take part in sample lectures uh, because it'll give you a bit of an, an indication about what sort of things you will study and how you will study when you get to the university itself uh, again if you have the opportunity to open day speak to the staff um, and before you go in have questions ready think about what it is that you want to ask what do you want to find out don't just be a passive observer in the open day. Take part because you'll get far more out of it. Um, and if you have the possibility as well, have a look at some of the student accommodation, because again, when you're not in the lectures, you're not in the library, you're not in the computer workshops doing your work. Chances are you'll be spending a lot of time in your in your student accommodation. So have a look at that as well. Well, hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into the quantity surveying world and the process of how you get from where you are to becoming a quantity surveyor. 
Um, and uh, hopefully we will see you as quantity surveyors and quantity surveying students sometime in the future. Thank you very much.